Hey guys, this is Reese from Not My Major, and today, in honor of Michael Reeves' new video, we are going to go through and I'm going to show you how exactly you can build your very own screaming Roomba at home. Okay, so this sister screams a lot. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous video, he's just a Roomba I built who, whenever he runs into something, screams or curses or really just plays whatever audio file I want him to. He could sing a song, he could uh, recite the entirety of the B-movie script, I don't really know. Um, and I will say that I did get the idea to build Sir Screams a lot from Michael Reeves, uh, the user-suggested robots video, uh, way back when he uploaded that. And I built this Roomba contraption about four weeks ago. Um, and then Michael uploaded his own build, and I think if you guys haven't seen that, you really should go check it out. I can't imagine how you found my video before his, if you did somehow. If you're coming from Michael's video, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to build the same Roomba that Michael did. Uh, after watching his video, I could see that we built ours in kind of two different ways. Uh, and Michael's build is a lot more impressive and it works a lot better, but at the same time, it's also a lot more complicated and I think the components he ended up using were a bit more expensive. So. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can build this at home, hopefully for cheap and hopefully pretty easily. Um, you, we will be using not a whole lot of high cost components uh, and we're going to be putting it together. It wouldn't take you more than, you know, maybe a couple hours. Uh, and in this video, I am just going to be showing you the components that I use and how I wired the circuits and made them all fit together. Um, I will not actually be showing myself making the program that runs the Roomba or explaining in depth the program that runs the Roomba. And this is not to say that you won't get that program. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to my program that you can download and use. Just upload it to your Arduino and you'll be good to go. But if you guys want an actual video with me explaining how I made the code for the Roomba and how it works, then you should, you know, drop a comment and let me know, and if enough people say that they want to see it, then I might do a future video uh, over exactly how the code works. And that being said, we are just going to go ahead and dive right into this. Okay, in order to build your very own screaming Roomba, obviously the first thing you're going to need is a Roomba. Um, what particular model, I don't think it really matters. The way that this build works is it operates off of this front bumper that goes in and out, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty much standard on all models of Roomba. Uh, I could be wrong, but this build should work, theoretically, with any Roomba that has this bumper that goes in and out like that. Uh, so in addition to the Roomba, you also need an Arduino. I'm using an Arduino Uno. Theoretically, you could use really any Arduino you want, but you might have to end up changing the code a little bit in order to fit whatever Arduino you're using. Uh, and in addition to the Arduino, we also need some jumper cables. These are a whole bunch of male to male jumper cables. And you're also gonna need at least four female to male jumper cables. Um, and you're gonna need probably the most important part here is this, the serial MP3 player. Uh, and it has a little micro SD card in the back. You'll also need one of these because I don't believe this module really comes with one of these. So. Serial MP3 player, micro SD card, Arduino. This is a little mini breadboard. Um, I just used a miniature one because uh, it fit better. You can use a full size one. You're just gonna have to figure out different ways of mounting it on the actual Roomba. It's not a big deal. This is really the biggest, you don't need one bigger than this. You can really get away with using one this size, but if you only have a bigger one, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you'll also need limit switches. I only use the one but theoretically you could do this build with multiple limit switches. In addition to that, you'll also need a speaker to play the sounds out of. And the speaker needs to have aux input. That's very important because this is not obviously a Bluetooth setup. You also need the aux cord, your data and power transfer for the Arduino, uh, some kind of mobile power supply for the Arduino. I'm just using a little power bank here, a USB power bank. Um, but you could also just use like the regular 9-volt battery setup that you can do with an Arduino. 
and you'll need some kind of adhesive to hold everything to the Roomba. I've been using these little 3M double-sided sticky tabs. They're very good. They're very, you can actually see where I had them on here on the past and I had to rip them off. They're very strong. Um, so I prefer these, but if you're not maybe wanting to make this a permanent change to your Roomba, you might want to get something with a little less grip. Okay, so if you didn't catch all that, don't worry about it. I'm going to leave a list of all the parts you're going to need in the description, uh, as well as hopefully some links about where you can buy all of these different parts. Most of it should be available on Amazon. None of it should cost you very much. Um, I'm not going to link to buying a Roomba. If you buy a Roomba just to do this, good on you. But uh, I'm too broke for that. Anyway, <clears throat> once you have all your components, the first thing that you're going to need to do is assemble the circuit. Uh, and the circuit looks kind of like a mess because it is kind of a mess. My uh, circuit design is not the best. I am, again, a hobbyist. And this is, you know, one of the very first circuits I ever designed. So uh, I will explain it on here exactly how um, the circuit goes. But don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing. I will leave another link in the description to a circuit diagram that you guys can follow. And it should be fairly self-explanatory. Um, but let's just go ahead and dive right into how this is all set up. Okay, so once you have all of your components ready, you're going to want to assemble everything according to this circuit diagram, uh, which I will also be uploading and posting a link to in the description, so you guys can download it and look at it while you assemble. Uh, but I'll go over quickly how to assemble uh, based on that diagram. So, you're going to want to take your serial mp3 player, and you're going to need four of the male to female jumper cables, and you're going to attach them to the pins. I've been using these red and, or these blue and green ones for the RX and TX uh, on there. And then I've been connecting this white and black one to the VCC and ground. So the RX and TX uh, get connected to different pins on the Arduino itself. And the VCC and ground, VCC just means the 5 volt input, and ground is ground. So, you're going to take your RX and TX cables, <clears throat> and RX goes to pin number uh, 6, and TX goes to pin number 5, I believe. Okay, so I just checked the circuit diagram and realized I got these backwards. So we're just going to flip them real fast. TX should be in pin number 5 and RX should be in pin number 6. Uh, it's documented a little weird on the code. Um, I didn't write it that way. I kind of copy-pasted it from a different source. And uh, it looks like it's written backwards. But if you just follow the diagram, it should work out fine. That's why it's very useful to have these diagrams on hand. Then you can go over here and you can take your positive and negative, and plug them into the breadboard. We'll just put positive here, and negative here. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take two male-to-male -male jumper cables. I like using these red and black ones for positive and negative. And you're gonna run the red one from the five volt output on the board. Oops. to the positive white pin that we just did for the serial mp3 module and you're going to run, want to run the black pin oops that's not where that was supposed to be there we go from one of the grounds to the ground of the serial mp3 player that we just plugged in Next, you're going to take another one of the male-to-male -male jumper cables, and you're going to run it from pin number two on the board to the other side of the breadboard here, just like that. You're going to take pins connected to your um, 
these pins are connected to my limit switch. And you're gonna take the one that's connected uh, to the pin labeled C and plug it in to the same row as the blue wire you just plugged in. Then you're gonna take this pin Then you're going to take, uh, next you're going to take this pin, which I have connected to the um, NO pin on the uh, limit switch. And you're going to plug it into the same row as the rest of the ground connections. So just right in there, just like that. And then you're going to want to manage these cables. Mine are uh, conductive thread, um, which is a bit more difficult uh, because I've got to make sure that they're not... Whoops. My connections here are made with conductive thread, uh, which means I need to make sure that they are not touching at any point or they'll short uh, and cause the thing to activate. Um, but you can do these with regular pins. You just need to connect them to the right, um, right pins on the limit switch itself. So I'm going to go ahead and tape these down, and then we'll get on, get on to the rest. So, on the Arduino, you can see we've got four cables, these two here, and these two here, running to the serial MP3 player. So the serial MP3 player uh, has two inputs for the RX and TX, and this VCC is the 5 volt input, and GND is ground. So we have over here on the breadboard, we have the VCC white cable going to this red cable, which is going right into the five volt input on the Arduino. Uh, and then over here, we have the black ground cable to this black ground cable going to the ground input on the Arduino. Um, then we have the RX, which is this blue cable going to pin number, uh, let's see, it looks like pin number six on the Arduino, and the green, pin, uh, the green wire is running to pin number five, and these are the digital pins, not the analog pins. Now, for one of the most important parts of this setup is the limit switch, and the limit switch is set up like this. We have an output going from pin number 11 here, which goes into this red pin red wire, which is connected to the, uh, uh, what does that say? This is the NC, can get the focus there, to the NC on the limit switch, and then the C on the limit switch is routed back here to this blue wire, which is going to digital uh, number 10. So current flows from digital 11 to the switch gets blocked off by the fact that the switch is open. When the switch closes, closes the circuit, sends the current to this pin, which goes back into digital 10, gives the signal to the Arduino. So that's the basic setup on here. Um, and once you have all that set up, what you can do is you can take your serial MP3 player, there we go, and your aux cord, Hook it all up, plug it in to your speaker, plug in the power, and if you have everything set up correctly, when you click the switch, a little sound will play. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Don't worry, we're not done with the build. Uh, this is part one of a two-part series I'm doing on this. And also, don't worry, you're not going to have to wait for the second part. By the time you watch this, it should already be uploaded. Uh, you can just go straight to it. Um, but thanks for watching this, and if you like what I'm doing and you like this build, uh, you like the other content on my channel, then obviously subscribe. Um, I'm going to be putting out a whole bunch of new stuff soon. Uh, like the video, drop comments if you think I need to change something or need to do something better. Um, obviously, this is a really new channel. 
let me know how I can improve. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys in part two.